How do you believe post-colonial theory can be effectively applied to contemporary global power dynamics, particularly in regions where colonial legacies continue to shape social political landscapes? Really good question. And, and people have already done it. One thing that I always caution people against is that they should not assume that post-colonial theory is one single theory. Right? So there are post-colonial Marxists, post-colonial social theorists, post-colonial feminists, right? post-colonial ideologists, post-colonial material critics. And even you, if you just look at India, the, the works produced by people, people like Ranajit Goha, right? Deepesh Chakrabarti, Partha Chatterjee, all of these people and the entire oeuvre of the Subaltern Studies Collective, all of these people are dealing with legacies of colonialism in one way or the other. Not just what the Europeans did and how they divided our cultures and plundered them, but also what is it that we are struggling with even now, right? So in, my, in any sense, post-colonial studies will stay relevant and will keep becoming stronger and stronger because more and more people are thinking about these things. So, I mean, if you look at the colonial legacies, both India, Pakistan, and to some extent Bangladesh, these are the regions that I know of. If you look at our civil and penal code, so much of it is still what we inherited from the British. Our civil services system is are an exact replica of what used to be the British civil services system, right? Then the police, the way it is organized. So post-colonial studies then encourages us to question these power structures, right? And to ask our politicians and, and so-called leaders to redefine these things, to restructure these things, to make them more responsive to the people, right? One big problem in colonialism was that the state mechanisms were not built with people's participation. They were top down. And if those are kept intact, that means then those institutions are not responsive to the people. So one struggle in post-colonial studies then would be study the legal system, study the law, study how civil services are structured how the justice system is structured, and then articulate our critique of it, uh, articulate our critique of it as being part of the colonial legacy. So I think that's the kind of work we can do in post-colonial studies.